Good evening, everyone. It's so great to be here at this dinner. I was here at uh, this dinner last year, and it was really, really fantastic gathering. And one of the things that I like so much about this crowd is you look around you and you'll find you're seated with people who come from actual industry. And I remember last year, I was seated beside someone, and I said, and I'm used to going to luncheons where there's people who are in public policy and government, and they're all lovely people, and they're my friends. But we get used to each other. You know what I'm talking about. And at last year's dinner, I was sitting at the table, and I turned to somebody and said, what do you do? And the person said, well, I run a ball-bearing manufacturing company, and I employ 150 people. I went, wow. And I think we need more dinners like that, where you look around, and you see the people you're seated beside, and they're really just every day working hard, not necessarily getting their names or faces in the paper, but they are... They're the everyday heroes, and they're the people who are making this country great. So hats off to all of you. Thank you very much. Now, I will tell you, when Jocelyn first asked me to introduce Mark Norman, it was a great honor, of course, to be asked to do that. But I thought, looking at the schedule, that that would mean that I would be speaking, and the award would happen after Rex Murphy. And I will tell you, people in Canadian media show business We'll say there's one unwritten rule out there. You never follow Rex Murphy. <laughs> Good luck trying to seem intelligent or witty uh, after he's spoken. So you're in for a real treat, and thankfully, things have been arranged uh, more in my favor, so I'm not in that unenviable position. Uh, but regardless, I would have made an exception to that golden rule because what I'm going to talk about right now is an exceptional case concerning an exceptional man. Retired Vice Admiral Mark Norman first joined the Royal Canadian Navy as a reservist in 1980 in his hometown of Kingston. Now, after completing university, he went on to join the regular forces. Now, his decades-long career had many highlights. He participated in Canada's involvement in Yugoslavia in the early 1990s. He became a commanding officer of a frigate, and then he rose through a series of positions until eventually becoming commander of the Royal Canadian Navy in 2013. He held this position until 2016, when he then became Vice Chief of the Defense Staff. Now, I hope you'll agree that I could just stop there and we could read that resume and we could say that alone is enough to honor Vice Admiral Mark Norman tonight. But something happened. On January 9th, 2017, the RCMP raided Mark Norman's home, seized his devices, and went through his personal documents. He was then removed from his post having been accused of releasing government information about shipbuilding contracts. He was left in limbo for months until he was criminally charged with one count of breach of trust. Now that is a charge that comes with a potential jail time of five years. Jail time for five years. Now some of us scratched our heads. Leaked documents? Ottawa is like leaky like a sieve. What on earth does this mean? No one has ever faced such a charge. This is bizarre. How did this all come about? Well, Admiral Norman and his legal team, they denied it all from the beginning. They fought it, and they mounted a powerful and thorough defense. Now, last May, the prosecution announced the game was up and stayed the charge, acknowledging, as everyone knew, there was no chance of conviction. Is this chain of events justice? Is what happened right? Canadians did not think so. Many thousands of people from all walks of life contributed to Norman's Defense Fund. I will tell you, when I wrote about it, when I simply made a social media post about it, the public response was unlike any story we have had in this country in years. People in uniform gathered outside the courtroom on days that they knew Mark Norman would be attending. General Rick Hillier, he said last March, before the charges were stayed, he said it on stage in Ottawa, I was there, I saw it, he said, Mark Norman is a personal hero of mine. I will stand by him anytime. General Andrew Leslie resigned as a Liberal MP on May 1st of last year. Two days later, he appeared in front of the courthouse, in front of the media, for all the cameras and all the public to see, to embrace Mark Norman, to shake his hand, and to say that he would be willing to testify on Mark Norman's behalf, to testify against that government that he had just announced his resignation from. Now, perhaps the prosecution's decision to stay the charge was an entirely technical one. 
and I'm sure that was the bulk of it. But I would also like to think that it finally dawned on them, someone in that apparatus, that what they were doing was not just taking on one solitary man, but they were taking on the heart and soul of this great nation. And there was no way they would succeed in that, of course. You know, it's funny, the government throws up its hands and it says, you know, we, we gotta give $10 million to Omar Khadr. We, we just gotta do it. We can't fight him in court. We can't figure out any way. Our hands are tied. But the former head of the Navy, throw the book at him, lock him up. Where are our priorities? Now, it's funny because this matter first entered the legal realm when the Privy Council Office referred the matter to the RCMP. What, what do those terms mean? What does that sentence even mean? Well, the Privy Council Office, they're the top bureaucrats who answer directly to the Prime Minister. They do his bidding. Referred the matter. I kept hearing that sentence. What, what does referred the matter mean? Well, that's polite speak for saying they called the cops on him. It means they said, let's get him, boys. And this tragically remains a stain upon our nation. Now, it's not quite right to say that giving the truth to power award to Admiral Norman is about helping to restore his honor. Because his honor was never in question, was it? But perhaps this award tonight can play a role in restoring Canada's honor, in removing that stain for this ridiculous charade that should never happen in the first place. Please join me in welcoming to the stage the recipient of this year's Truth to Power Award, retired Vice Admiral Mark Norman.